Still waiting to get into Overwatch. I think I'm 69th in the queue. Nice. What up, viewers? What up, what up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, October 7th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Um, starting off this week, uh, actually, this is a little bit more in the middle of the week. Um, we got a Nintendo Direct this week. Um, they were kind of teasing it last week. I said week way too many times in the first five seconds of this video. Um, yes, there was a Nintendo Direct, and they finally showed off the Mario trailer, the one for the Chris Pratt and Illumination movie. Um, watched I watched it live. Uh, it was kind of fun hearing from a couple of the actors uh, and a couple of the people behind the movie. Um, but overall, the trailer I thought was um, pretty good. Um, I I really enjoyed kind of where it started out with um, Bowser. If if you haven't seen it, go watch it uh, and come back. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed seeing Bowser. Um, I didn't I couldn't quite tell that that was Jack Black. I could kind of hear it when he wasn't all gravelly and growly. Um, but yeah, it was really funny at the beginning. Um, I definitely get some uh, some minions vibes from those penguins, except for I think they're a little bit more self serious, which would be fun. Um, but then Chris Pratt's Mario was basically just Chris Pratt voice. Um, I think I heard a little bit of a tinge of maybe like a loose Italian accent, um, but it was mostly Emmett from the Lego Movie. That's kind of what I heard. So uh, um, hopefully, I think. Well, I think some of the concerns have come to bear, but uh, I'm still waiting to kind of see more. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the art style, really enjoyed the look. Uh, it looks like we'll be following Bowser. He's going from world to world, trying to collect stars. So it should be really interesting how they kind of interact and uh, and what, uh, what, what happens along the way. So uh, I know I'm pretty excited. I know my wife is very excited um, for another, uh, and she doesn't usually get excited for like animated movies. So uh, it's good to see that one. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of the Mario trailer down below um, as it was kind of a kickoff for New York Comic Con. We got to see 12 minutes of co-op gameplay for the Bat Family in Gotham Knights. Um, I'm really excited about this game. Uh, it's coming out in just a couple weeks. So very much really excited for it. Um, the co-op, it's seen like the, I don't think the, I guess the testers for the trailer weren't, uh, or the hands-on preview weren't very coordinated at least it kind of just seemed janky a little bit um but um but yeah the like co-op how the characters move together and work together i think should be really interesting and i just want a co-op arkham game so uh, i'm pretty excited for gotham knights um but uh, i'll have a link down below so you can check out all 12 minutes of that co-op uh hands-on preview big news for dead space fans the dead space remake trailer dropped today and it showed off gameplay for the first time um, which was fun and, and nice to see. Um, I, I didn't play the original one, so this was kind of all new to me. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of really excited for the game. Uh, they also announced a collector's edition, which I think uh, caught a few people by surprise because it's not being developed or, or distributed by EA. It's being um, distributed by Limited Run Games. And as someone who has pre-ordered Stray and still has no uh, no shipping date on my uh, copy of the Stray uh, Collector's Edition, uh, I'm not too uh, confident in when I might or might not receive my Dead Space uh, Collector's Edition. But it comes with a hat, so uh, hopefully my wife doesn't see this because I have way too many helmets, as you may or may not know. Um, but I'm uh, pretty excited for this. Um, but yeah, no... Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know that I will get this when the, when it launches uh, and I have very little faith in limited run games unfortunately uh, after only one or two interactions with them unfortunate moving right along we got to see a character trailer for dark tide which was exciting because I hadn't I completely lost uh, track of dark tide uh, the Warhammer 40k like vermin tide or left for dead kind of game um, they showed out the character trailers, so we'll slowly get to know each of the four different characters. This one was about a zealot slash, slash preacher, um, and it sounds like, it seems like they've got a really big hammer, which is going to be good for, like, big melee attacks, and then just kind of rotated through. I don't know if you're picking up weapons, or you just have a couple weapons you can choose from, um, because they showed off, like, a, a shotgun with a flamethrower, which definitely sounds awesome. Uh, they showed off, like, a small, like, some machine gun type gun. Um, I think there was a pretty heavy uh, like Gatling gun kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested to see what each of the characters would be like. Probably not the character for me, but uh, I know that I'll have friends uh, to play the, with this and it's coming out 
uh, sooner than I expect. So just a just a, just a short month away. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Lots of co-op games to play this quarter. I'm very excited. Like I said in the uh, cold open, uh, I did struggle to get into Overwatch. I still have not played Overwatch 2 yet. Um, after uh, continuously trying to get beat the queue system, um, I, I could never get in on Tuesday and haven't tried since, and maybe I'll get some playtime in after this. Um, but I, it wouldn't be a Blizzard game without a few server issues at launch. Uh, I have learned that over my many years as a World of Warcraft fan, uh, especially on launch day for any of those expansions. Um, partially due to a DDoS attack, which, uh, you know, it's frowned upon and I don't, uh, I don't blame them about that, but I doubt that this would have gone over smoothly even without that, um, cause I, that's just kind of how I've been trained in my many years of buying Blizzard products. Um, also my friends that did log in, I think a couple of them had profile issues where they had some characters locked, but not all of the ones that they should have had unlocked and. And they didn't have they had skins for the characters they did have unlocked but not for the ones they should have yet so it was it was a lot of confusion um, i bet they are patching the hell out of the game um it's probably been patched several times since it launched on tuesday um and i believe the server's down right as as i'm recording this so uh hopefully they get those back up and running and i'm, I'm i am excited to uh to play overwatch 2 because i definitely missed the first one unfortunately i was a battle board fan and uh, i chose my side and uh, now i have to switch to the other side because there is no more Battleborn. Uh, give me a uh, sound off in the in the comments if anybody uh, enjoyed Battleborn 2K's response response to Overwatch. I don't know. They came out at the same time. But moving right along, <laughs> CD Projekt Red announced six games in their upcoming slate. Um, this is by no means coming out any sooner than uh, several years from now, but they kind of talked about the next, I bet, 15 years or so of the games that they'll be releasing. Um, this was all divulged during an earnings call, so I think this is also going to help their stock as they announce, hey, we're working on more and more games, we're uh, acquiring studios, studios are working on Witcher games, uh, the, this, the, pro the Cyberpunk sequel, so uh, lots of stuff going on at CD Projekt Red, but uh, I think, yeah, besides my uh, pessimistic view that this was all for uh, get a little stock bump, um, I also think that they're going to start recruiting. They're going to recruit heavily because they are working on six different games. Uh, I believe three of them were Witcher games, one of which one of the Witcher games was going to be multiplayer. So I would definitely love to be like, I mean, probably not Geralt and, and Ciri, but something like that, running around in the same world uh, and just taking out monsters together. So uh, I could definitely see, we've already seen uh, something like that in the Witcher DLC for Monster Hunter. Um, so I could definitely see something Monster Hunter-esque in the Witcher world where you just run around with a couple of friends uh, and take out monsters, but as a series of Witchers, especially if I can create my own character uh, within that world, I'm, I would be pretty excited about that. Like I said, they also had a couple studios that are working on various different things. So uh, yeah, they're, they're growing and growing. Um, and then they also announced Cyberpunk 2 uh, coming out. Um, so yeah, that's all very exciting stuff. Uh, I, you know, I like most people, I'm still pretty wary of CD Projekt Red and what they're working on and, and won't get too hyped for it, but I am kind of excited for a non-Geralt Witcher game, a multiplayer Witcher game, um, as well as Cyberpunk 2, because I did enjoy uh, the first Cyberpunk. So, uh, and might eventually pick it back up once I watch Edge Runners, because apparently Edge Wa you watch Edge Runners and then you play Cyberpunk. Um, or at least that's what all the people on Steam who are still playing or who are playing Cyberpunk uh, must think. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Let me know which of CD Projekt Red's titles you're most excited about. Um, I, as the gaming community has slowly realized, or at least I might be projecting, but uh, uh, racer style bucket seats are not the uh, not the best thing to be in for 10 to 12 hours a day while you're gaming. Um, so I think Logitech is, is doing the right thing by uh, partnering up with Herman Miller. Uh, they make a lot of like really, really good chairs, um, but are more in like the office chair kind of view um, or office chair kind of style. So kind of racer seats are kind of out as where everyone's going to move in towards uh, more of a, a uh, more office comfortable kind of seating. So um, the chair is going to cost somewhere around $1,000. Um, so don't think that's too expensive for a gaming chair because I've seen a lot of them 
uh, be a lot more than that, but uh, it's still worth a shiny penny if you're looking to get a new chair like I am. Um, actually, I, I don't know that I'm trying to get a new chair. I, I replaced this, I think, during the pandemic, so uh, I'm still I'm still liking my chair. I just never kick out the uh, leg rest. I should really do that more often. Um, <laughs> moving right along, I digress. Uh, moving right along, uh, Humble's monthly, Humble Bundle's monthly uh, subscription service um, has some pretty cool games in it this month, including Deathloop. Uh, as someone who played through Deathloop and, uh, and thoroughly enjoyed it, um, I definitely think it'd be worth picking up, especially if it's uh, via Humble Bundle and some of the money you spend on that will be going towards charity. Um, so definitely worth, uh, worth at least that. So uh, go ahead and check that out. I'll have a link down below in the description. There's a new uh, indie game that caught my eye this week. Um, it's What If Castlevania Was Also a Dating Sim, uh, which dating sims are kind of getting, I think there's dating sims are kind of a dime, dime a dozen right now, but uh, but Castlevania already has sexy vampires, so sexy vampires trying to hook up with other sexy vampires, I'm all for it, as anybody who <laughs> knows me will definitely know. Uh, and the game is aptly called Romancelvania, uh, so perfect, perfect name. Uh, for exactly what you think. You're going to have side scrolling parts where you're fighting bosses, uh, and then I assume when you get through those bosses, you'll have to flirt with their daughter or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's an inter interesting game. Uh, something that caught my eye. I'm not usually a Castlevania fan myself, um, but uh, definitely uh, like vampire dating sims, <laughs> whatever that says about me. And last but not least, another indie game that caught my eye this week was a uh, first-person dungeon um, dungeon crawling game. I thought that was really interesting, uh, giving like a, a first-person perspective. The art style kind of reminded me of like Diablo 2 cutscenes, kind of. Um, so I really like the art style as well. Um, also kind of an older Elder Scrolls kind of vibe with the art style. Um, the game was called Dungeons of Amber Griffin, um, which is quite a mouthful. Um, the combat seemed pretty cool. It was kind of like cooldown management. Um, so very much again kind of in that Diablo vein, but you're first person and you're moving through um, You're moving through uh, a dungeon or what I saw was like a graveyard uh, Which is all pretty interesting. So uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll have a link down below so you can check that out Let me know what you think of it That's it for this week If there's anything you think I forgot feel free to leave a comment down below We can always talk news uh, or anything else in my Discord or down below in the description or in the uh, in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you do, please follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend, and I hope you have a super day. Bye.